Welcome, it's your boy King Wabra from Gamer to Gamer. I'm here with the first podcast from the new event within Gamer to Gamer, the podcast team, and I'm here with uh, the boys, really. So I'd like for them to introduce themselves. I'll go with Blake first. So Blake, introduce yourself, mate. What's up? My name is Blake, aka Smoking Dang Fifty Two Eighty. I play on the PlayStation Four, the Three, sometimes the Vita. And I uh, YouTube for Couch Jockey Gaming. Um, that's pretty much it. That's it. There you have it. And uh, over to Ethan. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Ethan. And some of you may know me, some of you may not. But I am a PC gamer mo mostly. And I do not currently own any next gen pl consoles beyond my PC. And. I, I'm not that old, so I might not really know that much about retro gaming, but, you know, more than willing to try it. And, yeah. And over to Matt. Introduce yourself, Matt. Guys, right, so Sonic's Conquest, or Matt, if you want. I'm an Xbox One gamer, so I'll be from the Xbox One side today. Alright, so let's let's go back to uh, Ethan, because he brought up a, a like a critical thing for me. Basically, he said he's only a, a PC gamer, so why haven't you gone over to the next generation consoles, Ethan? Why oh, it's, it's really down to the fact that my um, PC is powerful enough to run most next-gen games, and I, I'm i currently a bit pushed for like the funds to go with that, and I had the option of either getting a next-gen console or a gaming PC, which I built myself, but the gaming PC was the better deal as the the components in here are more powerful than the components you'd find in a PlayStation 4. Just a, just a bit on a par, just a bit above, if you get me. Okay, I understand that. I understand that. So we've got some, we've obviously got the PC gamer in here. We've got a PlayStation 4, we've got the Xbox One. So, so Blake, let me, uh, let's have a little talk about your PlayStation 4. What are you enjoying about your PlayStation 4 experience other than the PS3 and last gen, what is the big difference you notice more with your PS4? The biggest thing for me, honestly, um, the games look a hell of a lot better. They look crisp. The They just look awesome. But most importantly is the controller. I, I've i always hated the, uh, the DualShock 3. I actually started, well, I started gaming Atari and Nintendo and PC when I was really little. But I was on Xbox way before I ever had a PlayStation, and I liked the Xbox controller. And I it took me until the DualShock 4 to actually like holding that damn controller. I love that thing. But other than that, it's just a great system. I love being able to record the games I've been having a blast with. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I love my PS4. That's that's a it's a good choice considering there's a lot more PS4s on the market now and in most household uh, families really there's a lot more PS4s compared to the Xbox One but the Xbox One is catching up but you know like you've got that new game The Order what what do you think's good about that do you do you like the storyline or is it just a you know an eye candy game where it's too much sugar coated what do you what do you think on that. Honestly, you've got the wrong gamer. I don't have the order. I passed it up. Oh, that was it. I remember now. I remember. Yep, I didn't go with it. I honestly, and I'm one of the ones where I won't knock the game. I don't think it's going to be trash because it wasn't. Uh, it's made by Naughty Dog. It's got a But for me, 60 bucks on a 5 to 10 hour game, I just can't justify that right now. I I just, the game looks great from what I've heard. The story's great. I just. I need that price to come down. Fair enough. Before you even touch it, that makes sense. Right. That makes sense. That <laughs> averages out at about six dollars an hour. Yeah, that's it. That's so a dollar to every ten minutes. That's mm. really not worth it. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's totally good, isn't it? So over to over to Matt. So you're you're an Xbox One gamer. What what's the main reason you chose to purchase an Xbox One over a PS4, is it because you you enjoyed the 360 so much? I know you had the PS3, but what was what was the reason you chose the Xbox One over the PS4? No, there's you know that you ain't got to be anti console. Just tell me your general opinion of that. Oh no no, you know I'm not anti anti PS4 at all. I mean I know it's a 
it's a beautiful machine. But um, I've always been an Xbox gamer since the 360. And before that, I did have a PS2. So uh, it's not that I'm anti Sony or anything, because I did love the PS2. But um, I mean, the Xbox One, the controller's better, the Kinect actually works, which is nice. It actually understands you most of the time. Um, the only problem with the Xbox One is that the hard drive runs out really quick. So, I mean, I've had to buy a couple of external hard drives, but other than that, that's the only reason, you know. Really, the sort of downfall. So, so let's go back to Blake. What your PlayStation Four? What's the gigabyte on that compared to the uh, Xbox One? Is it the same five hundred gigabyte? Oh, well, the five hundred gigabyte, or what we what stock, we got? Stock, right out of the box. Yes, it's five hundred gigs. Um, mine actually, I swapped out and put a two terabyte Samsung ten point drive in it, though. So I've got because you're allowed to do that with the PS Four. Yeah, I've got about seven hundred gigs of games on this as of right now. Maybe a little more. Um, I'd have to double check. Okay, okay. That's but, fair yeah. enough. That's the only downfall with the Xbox One. Like Matt was saying, he's gone out and purchased a couple of terabyte hard drives. Like I've, I got recommended one by Matt, a Seagate one, and I'm, I'm, I find that amazing. I bought a three terabyte hard drive, and I've only used sixteen percent of that, so I'm doing quite well with that. So. Yeah. So let's let's go back to Ethan. So you probably don't have that problem, really. So what does uh, your PC, what's your space? What's your space on your on, hard drive? I've got an external hard drive, which is a Seagate expansion drive of 2 terabyte, and the internal hard drive is a terabyte. So overall, so I two. have about 3 terabytes of memory space, which is free for just installing games, not not the, the processor. Oh, no, I've got... No, nah, the... Eight gigabyte and all that. That, yeah, it's just that. All that's just free. Oh, Give nice. or take a few, a couple hundred maybe, but that's about it. Oh, that's pretty good. So, being a PC gamer, what is the main game you're playing at the moment, and the main game you're looking forward to to purchasing on your PC this year? Oh, PC games that I could purchase. Well, I can't really um say any names for the um which ones I'm looking forward to as these games will be releasing on other platforms as well, but Metal Gear Solid Five is going to be quite cool. And this month, Assassin's Creed Rogue is coming out on PC in about three days. And if you don't know me, I'm a massive Assassin's Creed fan. Hmm. Um, also, the game I play the most on PC at the moment is uh, Optimization, Good or Bad, Assassin's Creed Unity. Ah. <laughs> yeah, we've seen a few of your videos. You've... You, yeah, you you were quite happy with well, I don't know. You you it was mixed things. You were saying that they took an app away from from the Assassin's Creed Unity. Is that right? What made the game faster? It makes it run better now. Well, is, that, is that correct? No, what they did is they removed the unnecessary application. The only thing that I was annoyed about was that was the application ran better than the game did. Ah. Uh, so the app yeah. you can install still, but it's not as significant towards your in-game character or anything, just has an odd mission. That's fair enough. But overall, I'm quite happy with that update. Yeah. No, One before enough. it ruined the game. So has anyone got any topics they want to talk about? Obviously there's uh, GDC, if anyone um, noticed anything from that. You're more than welcome to have a little... Uh, anyone want to have a little topic, have a little browse of something, and we'll all have a little chat about that. Well, what game are you looking forward to? Oh, my personal opinion... I'm looking forward to Halo 5. I'm a big fan. That's one reason I'm an Xbox owner, purely because of Halo. I want to carry on the campaign. I want to know if they ever find Cortana. I want to know if uh, she survives her rampancy from Halo 4. Um, stuff like that. As Ethan says, Metal Gear Solid. Really looking forward to that. I enjoyed Ground Zero. It's one of them games where you know you paid sort of $25 for in, in US money or something or 16 quid in the UK, and you know, you've, you've got a 15 minute demo basically, but don't put me wrong, it was a great teaser for the upcoming Phantom Pain, so that is definitely a must buy for me, and they've just announced Mass Effect 4, it was obviously around the corner now, obviously they, you know, I think, Ethan, you said that, didn't you, Mass Effect what, 4? That Bioware has teased that Mass Effect 4 mm -hmm. is going, yeah, that's what they, they said they're working on it, so Very they have good. effectively announced it, just not in the spotlight, quite, they've done that's it over good. the internet. They said that they're working on a Mass Effect world that's bigger and better than it's ever been. So, 
Yeah, Mass Effect 4 oh, confirmed. Oh, well, thank you. No shit, I am, unfortunately. Oh. And thank you, uh, Blake, for asking me that question. Thank you. No problem. Well, so, uh, GDC, what did um, people sort of notice from that? Like, obviously, you've got a lot of lot of stuff happening there, you know? You've got some new stuff from there. Mainly, I think, because it's a sort of a gadget show, they've got a lot of that sort of uh, VRs going, you know? You've got the VR mm -hmm. for... Uh, Project Morpheus for the uh, PlayStation 4, which uses the uh, eye toy, is that correct? Hmm. I'm Anyone? not sure exactly how it's working, but, uh, but yeah, I'm kind of interested in the Project Morpheus. I'm not... VR is cool, like, that would be a trip just to play it, in my opinion, but it kind of takes... It takes me out of kind of that social game and away from my family... Like, if yeah. I put on those goggles and I tried to play and my wife needed something and I'm in my VR land, I'm likely to get smacked upside the head. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. these things causing a big fight. Um, yeah. Also, I game a lot with my friends over, and passing a headset around is a lot different than passing a controller around. And, yeah, yeah, makes you know. sense. Plus, I don't want to puke on my carpet. <laughs> yeah. So it could be, it could be, you know... Uh, a stage one of the next sort of gaming, so there's obviously right. going to be these bugs with it, and they're obviously, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to kick off as much as they expect it will be. I think it'd be better for smartphones because I've noticed they've got a lot of VR now, like uh, HTC's working on one, and uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy S6 is working on their own VR headset. I think it'd be good for uh, mobile phones, but not for the actual gaming in your living room. As you say, it's unsociable. You lock yourself away too much, and you just be in your little VR world. I, I believe that's what you're saying. It's not. It's not a social social thing unless they incorporate that, you know, two player games and stuff like that. I've heard no, it. it does uh, have <laughs> being a HTC since it's working with Valve. Um, I've heard that it had it has a bit of an effect on your um, head, like gives you headaches and migraine, etc. Exactly what Blake said. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Or HTC ones, or in general. Well, when it comes to phone brands and all that, I'm trying to make them, they're, they're making these um, things right next to the warehouse where they're manufacturing tanks and mobile phones. So, you know, you don't. I don't know if they can specialize on something that's meant to give you a virtual experience that you can pass off as real if mm. they they make tanks like Samsung they're they're a, they're a well-known weapons manufacturer as well as a digital no. entertainment manufacturer really no that I, that I did not know but thank you for sharing I did not know that that they make weapons that's mad. yeah that Samsung are a well-known weapon manufacturer that and they can't know. make a phone that'll survive a fall um <laughs> I'm pretty sure Motorola tried that and it ended up dying. <laughs> no, that is yeah, true. I they actually did they try made that. that builder's phone, what was supposed to be indestructible. Yeah, I remember that. And it, they put it in water and it just broke. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's um, let's talk about um, some upcoming games. We're thinking, you know, you've got. A lot of um, free-to-play games coming out now, and there's a big one coming out. Probably, Ethan, you're looking forward... I don't know if you're looking forward to this, but it's available now on PC, and I don't know if you know what one I'm going to talk about, but that's Elder Scroll Online. You can pick that up now for about £15. Um, it's free-to-play online for PC, I think, uh, from from May, or I think so, and it's going to be available on PS4 and Xbox One, and also free-to-play online. Do you, do you think that will take your fancy, Elder uh Scroll? I've loved the Elder Scrolls franchise since Morrowind, so yeah, I'm going to try it, but from what I've heard, people don't really class it as an Elder Scrolls game as much as a game that collaborates with the Elder Scrolls lore since it's in the same universe. But I, I, I'll i give it a shot when it when it's like officially released as a buy-to-play instead of um, yeah, subscription and it's gone down to Yeah. I believe it's a monthly subscription right now. It is now till, till May, I think, when they release it on Xbox One and PS4. Not too it's far away until they release it on next-gen consoles, then. That's good. Yeah, I mean, that's what they're working on now. The PC version's already out. Yeah. 
I've realised something with games, as of recent especially, and it's something that I like to call Ubisoft Syndrome, where every developer has copied Ubisoft. I mean, PC ports are all terrible these days. Games are released about three years after they're announced, and when not, they're rushed. And glitched to heck, and mm. it seems to be all about the graphics and not about the experience, and the stories are all, like, to dust. I haven't played, like, PlayStation exclusives or Xbox One exclusives, like Sunset Overdrive or Infamous Second Son or The Order 1886 or anything like that, but I'm just going over what I've gathered from my experiences, and I'm not really that impressed with what how gaming's turned for the worse since, uh, well, well, since 2013, hasn't it? 2014 was a horrific year for game releases. Yeah, no, I can understand that. I definitely can understand that. They're rushing a lot of games recently and stuff like that. I think it's the consumers who are, are rushing. The You know, the, the people who are making these games know that they're going to make a mint out of whatever they publish, and it's all about these fake adverts they do to advertise the game with cinematic trailers and stuff like that. Oh, that sell the game to people. And I feel that, you know, when people do get them, yeah, they're then, um, you know, confronted with a game that's only four to five hours long with um, just hardly any play playthrough factor, you know, just going back to it. And that's why I think the pre-owned market is doing doing quite well still because the amount of people who are buying games and knocking them out either due to it being such a short game or achievements or trophies or it just being broken, especially, great example, I'm a Halo fan, I wanted all four games on one disc, the Master Chief Collection, it works as in they're all on there, but the multiplayer side of that game on release day up till this week was terrible, like the campaign was the only thing that actually worked in that game and you just physically could not play the multiplayer at all, you would either get knocked out of a game, they they were pushing updates after updates after updates and did not fix it at all, so yeah they're rushing a lot of games at the moment, I do know that and I do agree with you 100% in that, in that area. Yeah, I mean... Um, anyone else got any input on that? Because it could be a two-sided conversation here when there are four of us. In, yeah. in respect, Ubisoft, I mean, like, the crew wasn't rushed, and that came out all right. There wasn't many glitches on that. I mean, cars disappeared occasionally. <laughs> there we go. That, People um, just appeared out of nowhere in Unity, and I have to admit, Rogue wasn't that badly rushed on um, 360 where I played it, but I'm going to say, like, right up, that they didn't advertise that as much as they should. They released about four trailers, which... Well, that's because they wanted you to forget that 360 was in existence. They wanted you to buy Unity. Then why were so, they wasting their money on creating a project well, that just came well, out on... Because they're still funding Xbox 360. Well, it's been the same uh, time as 4 had, so it's in development at the same time as 4. So... That's why it got released still because it was um, I suppose I think it's supposed to be DLC like uh, Brotherhood was the two. Ah, so DLC. So I'm taking a theory that Rogue was meant to be the release for 2014, but since the next gen consoles were announced back in 2013 when they were developing it in the early stages, that then they thought, oh damn, we must get in there. That's money. That's big market. They must get into there yep. and get all the money. Just go in there. It turns out it didn't pay off that well. I mean, they're rich now, so, you know, I guess it did, but not quite. That's what a lot of people on consoles are angry about, really, because Rogue was the better game out of the two. Mm. And that kind of really upset people because they were expecting like, this big, vibrant city and they, what they got was glitch after glitch after glitch. Especially on right. PS4. I'm not sure if... Um, if, if Blake would agree with me there, but PS4 had the most terrible experience over Xbox One. At least Xbox One version kind of worked. From what I've been told, yes, I was. The I PC was done version with was worse. After three, um, and when I got Black Flag, I had fun playing Black Flag, but I haven't returned back to it after finishing the campaign. I'm wow. kind of just over Assassin's Creed, and I've been. I've really been looking towards the next gen for new IPs and brand new stuff as opposed to these remakes. And like Ethan says, 
all these glitchy games that we're getting. We're spending top dollar on these and expected to prepay for the game, prepay for a year's worth of DLC, and we get it and the games play like shit for the first month. It's I agree with Ethan, it's bullshit. That is correct. Prime example. But then while we've got Blake here talking about that, you've got a good example, Blake. I watched your video earlier, and you are playing a free-to-play game at the moment, and you seem to, to love it. You you like this game. Tell them what game you're playing, mate. Tell them what game you're playing. I started out a year ago playing this when it first dropped on the PS4, and I just came back to it, but I've been playing Warframe, a ton of Warframe. Um, Free-to-play. You can spend, I've got a buddy that's spent well over 200 in this game, and he's got a lot of cool shit, but other than just getting it early, none of it's stuff that I can't grind out. Um, I've spent probably $45 in-game for this, but it is a blast. Sounds it. Now, I've had the chance to play this game, and it is. It's very good. The sad thing about it, it actually released maybe two freaks, two sorry, two weeks or a month just before Destiny. So I only had a little chance to play it, and then next thing you know, Destiny's out, and that took over my social life, and I ended up actually deleting Warframe. And Warframe, to me, you're actually right, Blake. I'll probably go and re-download that tomorrow, and I'll probably give that a, game, uh, a go again, really. And that game, yeah, it looks beautiful. There's, uh, as you say, there's been a lot of updates. They're updating it on a regular basis, and it does, it does play really well. It does. I've been, it's one of the best games out right now, and I'm amazed that it's free. And they've got a good, they've got a good thing going because you've got more people downloading it for free then would go out and pick up this weird kind of space magic ninja game from Digital Extremes. For uh -huh. free, you can check it out, and most of the time, most people are going to put a few bucks into it, and I think it's a good business model for them. Yeah, you're right. And then there's some other free games at the moment. Like, this is also, I'm not sure if it's ever going to come out on PlayStation. I'm not even sure if it, they've even got a taste of it yet. But I know that I'm enjoying, on the 360, at the moment, I still play it to this day, World of Tanks. I know you can play it on PC, it's on the 360, and I know That's it's brilliant. coming to the Xbox One this, this year, maybe in the next month or so, next two months, and you can... That game is free to play. You can buy the in-game purchases, but that game's a, a good game. Have, have you ever thought you'd like to see that on the PS4? Honestly, not really, and I only say that because we've got War Thunder free to play, which is um, a World War II kind of historic play. Um, History is my zone, really. With, it actually has a tanks option. And okay. I try the tanks. I don't play the tanks, but I do actually like doing the uh, the planes. And so from, what I, from what I understand, the two games are very similar. So uh, I'm just kind of happy with yeah. This we've got our version. They've got theirs. It we're good to go. Oh, that makes sense. No, that's fair enough. That is fair enough. So are you looking forward to the Last of Us two if they ever? you know, confirm a date for that or at least a, a trailer. Did you ever play The Last of Us at all? I played The Last of Us Remastered on the PS4, and it was a really good game. I really enjoyed it. I can see why people gave it Game of the Year. It wasn't... I didn't have the, like, the life-altering moments that I think a lot of people had with that game. Um, it was really, really good, and if The Last of Us 2 came out, I wouldn't pre-order it, but it'd definitely be on a list of mine to buy. The yeah. biggest one I'm looking forward to right now actually is The Witcher 3 coming out in May. Oh. That is one that is on my pretty much must have list. So I'm gonna that's yeah, that's my favorite. Good. One. I'm gonna resort to honesty here and say that I don't think Naughty Dog are really the company to do sequels for every franchise they release. Because I mean, sequels these days have been proven to be rushed. Usually the original is better. So if Naughty Dog really wanted to do a sequel for The Last of Us, then they've got they've got a high bar to live up to. Otherwise, people are going to say they've killed the franchise, which is exactly the state that Ubisoft's in. Rockstar are the only company who don't seem to be scathed by this quite. But I mean, this is the boat that Treyarch's in as well. I mean, 
the Call of Duty franchise, it started off alright, but now look at it. Fish AI and futuristic Titanfall ripoffs. <laughs> I've had fun with the... To be fair to Mark Warfare, though, mate, um, that, that game was, um, in develop again, in development at the same time by the same company as Titanfall, because yeah, the company split up, didn't it? Yeah, I understand, so in a way, the fact that it was released later on made people think it was a Titanfall ripoff, so they haven't timed it perfectly. Which, I mean, it not their <laughs> fault, but the thing is, after they've seen the release of Titanfall, they should they should have just um, maybe hold, held it until January and you know, people would have forgotten about Titanfall because that's how narrow most gamers are these days. I mean, probably nobody yeah. in Gamer to Gamer because we're we're awesome, we are bay. But that just that like in flame bait communities where everyone says Xbox or PlayStation or this franchise or this one like Halo, Call of Duty, and that's a whale. But you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I can understand that. So, so let's let's talk a little bit about the the community. How do you feel the community in gaming to game is going um, at the moment now with the new new side? You know, we've got the we've got Ethan at the PC front. We've got we've got Blake at the PS PlayStation side. Do you think we're we're going in the right direction? Do you how do you feel we can? You know, we've we've all got our YouTube channels and we're all benefiting each other. But how do you think? As as a community, how do you feel that we? What what direction do you think we should go in? What do you think? Uh, over to let's let's have a little chat with Blake. Let's see what Blake thinks on that. If Blake's there, he's let's go with the mic. <laughs> he's AFK. Let's go with Ethan. All right, uh, I think that the. Um... Horizons literally expanded for the community since we've um, expanded the like the the crew a little bit, and I joined the new nation. If you get me, yeah, no, we can understand. I, that. I, I think I was the last person to join, wasn't I? We've got the alliance. Yeah, we've got. Yeah, we just need that uh, Nintendo side. Yeah, really, I, what I mean, I work on. there are a couple of people in mind which I have spoken to you about before. But the community is doing very well, actually. I mean, 1,600 members, give or take. That is... Yeah, I think we might have just made that, actually. Hmm. We made it today. Six yeah, that I'll, well, see. yeah, that's... Well, good there, guys. 1,600 well, members. We are one away from that, as I've looked. Oh, uh, is it? We're one away. We, we jumped too early, guys. <laughs> but, but don't worry about it. People are joining every day. By tomorrow, we'll have over the that number and it's gonna be brilliant. I mean Yeah, no, that's a good odd that's that's good. So let's let's have a have a look as well. We've got we're in talks at the moment. I was speaking to a guy Thursday night. I thought oh, this is gonna be the first for the community to to hear now. I was talking to a developer who develops for PS4 and PS Vita. He is the CEO of Razor Head Studios. Now, hopefully, we'll get an email out to him with some questions from the group behind Gamer to Gamer, and hopefully, be able to get him in on one of our future podcasts. So, you know, what do you think? Do you think that's a, a good move? Let us know in the comments section. But I'm going to go over to Matt right now. Matt, do you think that's a good move for Gamer to Gamer? Well, yeah, get some new um, people in and get some new developers to uh, talk to us, and that would be a good step in the right direction. Get more people to listen to our podcast, at least. Um, obviously, it's a new feature, so the more new stuff we can do with it, the better. Yeah, well, I hope so too. Now, now, Blake, are you are you back? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, okay, Blake. So, <laughs> what, you you've had a chance to. This is a prime example. You've had a chance to download one of uh, Razorhead Studios games. Now, obviously, I know I know you're going to give your your personal opinion. Now, what do you think of their their main title they're selling or their free game on PS4 right now? What what's let's have a let's have a little uh, talk about that. Um, they don't have a free game on PS4 right now. Their main game, their big one that's uh, gotten good reviews, is Ho Ho Com and. That one is honestly one that I can smoke a bowl and kind of just 
play for hours and the music, the colors, the movements, really, really good. Their other one that I played on the Vita, Frobisher says, is kind of like a... It, it even says when you turn it on, play Frobisher's stupid video game. Um, it's a bunch of stupid little games, kind of like Simon says. Um, it's fun for quick little... I can play here for five minutes. I can play here for three minutes. I don't ever sit there and play it for long periods of time, but it is good for filling time. Okay, so that that's that's is pretty yeah. Just just play it when you're bored, basically. That's what it's saying. I've got a couple minutes. I'll play a couple of these. It's a bunch of little mini games, is what it well, is. They're fun. So there's a lot of people who enjoy them, I suppose. Correct. It's more geared, I would say, more towards mobile gaming. Um, which I do enjoy some mobile gaming, but I'm more, I enjoy the bigger, the, the bigger, deeper epic games, you know. Yeah. Well, I've got another CEO um, going to be coming on soon. Um, the head of uh, from Codeheads, Codeheads Gaming, and basically they develop um, iPhone, Android games, and Windows-based like sort of browser games, basically for for mini clip and stuff like that. So I should have them coming on soon and they've got a game what's available now on your iPhone called Tipsy Turby and you know that's worth downloading that's a free game so obviously check that out but I will be having them on Gamer to Gamer shortly as well so we've got two great companies coming to Gamer to Gamer as an interview one being a mobile uh, and browser based uh, game developer and one for PS4 and um, your um, your PS PS Vita. So hopefully we'll uh, move across and hopefully go over to Xbox and get Ethan on some. Maybe even have getting Ethan on some developers. You know, new software. What's going to be available for his PC and stuff like that. Maybe he's looking at some new software and he wants to know uh, a bit more about it. Maybe he can reach out and hopefully you know the community is going to grow and we're going to expand and just get more notification. Really, you know. So. Yeah, we'll see how it goes from there. Yep. So, so obviously, you guys, we're gonna sort of wrap up the uh, the uh, you know the podcast now. So I want you guys to shout out your YouTube channel. So if we uh we go with uh, Blake first, you want to shout out your uh, YouTube channels for people to visit. Um, you can check us out on Couch Jockey Gaming on YouTube. Just search uh, Couch Jockey Gaming. And Ethan, over to you, my friend. Uh, it's effectively my name, which is Ethan Woodgate, which is quite boring, but sadly, it's all I could think about. Now, <laughs> it'll go over to Matt. Well, mine's even more boring. Mine's just Matt Epps because um, Google Plus changed it. Don't worry, uh, we'll we'll Con- it will go back to Solace Conquest eventually, so. <laughs> and uh, I'm your host, your boy King Wabra. You can check me out on my YouTube channel, King Wabra. That's just the usual. Also, you can check us all out on Google Plus. Hit us up. Uh, you can either message us one by one or group to chat us. We're always here to chat with you. And this is our first podcast from Gamer to Gamer. And we hope you all have a great week. And we'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.